Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Italy has announced a new raft of measures to tighten restrictions amid a surge in coronavirus cases. A mask-wearing Prime Minister, Giuseppe Conte, said the measures were needed to avoid a new lockdown. Mayors will get powers to close public areas after 9pm and the opening times of restaurants and the size of groups allowed will tighten. The move comes as Italy recorded its highest daily infection rate for the second day in a row. China's economy has continued its recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to its latest official figures. The world's second biggest economy saw growth of 4.9% between July and September, compared to the same quarter last year. However, the figure is lower than the 5.2% expected by economists. Thousands of people have attended rallies across France in honor of Samuel Paty, the teacher beheaded after showing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad to his pupils. A man named as Abdullak A was shot dead by police on Friday after killing Mr. Paty close to his school near Paris. An 11th person has now been arrested as part of the investigation. Demonstrations in Chile against inequality have turned violent as vandals burned two churches, virtually destroying one of them. A fire erupted at Santiago's Church of the Accession in the capital after vandals attacked the building located near Plaza Italia. Demonstrators are protesting on the one-year anniversary of marches against inequality. Later in the day, masked individuals firebombed a police headquarters and another church. <laughs> Thai police have announced an investigation of four news outlets after emergency measures imposed last week to try to stop three months of protests against the government and monarchy. The announcement at a press conference has prompted anger from media groups and accusations of an attack on press freedom. Police say there are around 20,000 protesters still out in the capital demanding reforms to the monarchy to reduce the powers of the king. Right-wing nationalist Ersin Tatar has won the presidential election in Turkish-controlled northern Cyprus. Mr Tatar, who is pro-Turkey and wants the divided Mediterranean island to be two separate states, received nearly 52% of the vote in a surprise victory. Cyprus has been divided since 1974, when Turkey invaded the north after a military coup backed by Greece. Exit polls suggest socialist candidate Louise Arquet is set to win Bolivia's presidential election. The polls indicate that Mr Arquet, who is an ally of exiled former president Evo Morales, has won enough votes to stave off a second round. Mr Arquet says he will form a government of national unity. Ballots are being counted in Guinea's presidential election as incumbent 82-year-old Alpha Conde seeks a controversial third term. Provisional results must be announced 72 hours after the closure of polling stations, according to the electoral law. Presidential candidates need more than 50% of the vote for an outright victory, or there will be a second round on the 24th of November. Ten other candidates are also running. New Zealand's next parliament is set to be the most inclusive ever with several people of colour and a high number of women. Labour won 64 of the 120 parliament seats and more than half of those are female candidates. It also has 16 indigenous Maori MPs and the first leader of African origin, an Eritrean former refugee. It was two days ago I was just door knocking and here I am in parliament today. And it's a huge privilege and uh, being the first African MP and uh, I think second Muslim in the history of New Zealand Parliament. I've been getting used to everything and knowing where everything is right now, right? It's a big place. It's all been so surreal uh, for me and my family. <laughs> and finally, specialised drones that disperse seeds will be trialled in Australia to help regenerate bushland and wildlife after the country's devastating summer bushfires. World Wildlife Fund Australia says it plans to use drones that can plant around 40,000 seeds a day, including ones for eucalyptus trees, which would help revive wildlife corridors across burnt-out landscapes and inaccessible terrain. Areas in consideration for the trial include northern New South Wales, southeastern Queensland and east Gippsland in Victoria. The magnitude of the bushfire crisis requires us to respond at a scale that's never been done before. That's why WWF Australia is launching a bold vision. The bold vision is called Regenerate Australia. Regenerate Australia will be our nation's largest ever restoration program. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.